Hickok 45. Yes, those are some really pretty rifles, aren't they? Lever guns, and that's what we're all about today. The last one I'd ever sell or get rid of. You've asked for it, and we actually plan to do it anyway. And you knew it would be difficult, right? Picking the last one I would let go. And it is very, very difficult. But we're going to attempt it. These are the finalists you're looking at. And uh, before we talk too much about them, why don't we shoot one of them? There's nothing like a lever gun. How about the good old Henry 1860 model? This one's in 4440, and it's a beautiful firearm. You've seen it before, I'll bet. You've seen it kill a two liter a few times. What's like that? Or a cowboy. Or a gong. Yeah, or a buffalo. Look at that. Or, how about a pig in the middle of the field? <laughs> or, a pot. Or, whatever that is. <laughs> Let's shoot a bowling pin. <laughs> click, click, click. Yes, oh, Henry 1860. Beautiful rifle. Nothing like a lever gun. Whether it's pretty or not, they're just fun to shoot and very practical. And they served a lot of people very well for a long time. I've been a fan of them for a long time. Many of you have too. And uh, that's why I have a few of them. And it, I don't know, maybe it'll make for an interesting uh, study, review, and which ones I would keep and which ones I would hang on or let go if I had to. And uh, I don't want to let any of them go and don't plan to do that. But let's talk about it a little bit, okay? I'll put this beautiful thing back. And uh, without further ado, you see what's on the table. Oh man, gorgeous. Let me give you just a quick rundown of what's here. You saw the Henry 1860. This is uh, my original 1886 Winchester, made in the year 1886, this specific one. You've seen it probably, I hope. And then what is this? This is an 1895 Marlin in 4570, as was that one. These are both 4570, and uh, this is the cowboy model of the 1895. It's a JM model. You've seen videos on it, I hope. It videos on all of these fine rifles. And then this is a 357 Magnum, a Model 94 Marlin. It's a JM model. I haven't had it all that long. You probably have seen it though, okay? Had it out on a Sunday uh, uh, shoot around not long ago. And this is a 1892 Winchester in 4440. Yep, beautiful. I love that sound, don't you? It's a, Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm telling you wrong. See, uh, <laughs> maybe I better let it go if I don't know what it is. No, this one's the 1894 in 3030. Okay, I haven't had it all that long. It was made in uh, 1929. So, 3030, beautiful gun. Pre 64, need, need I say. <laughs> and uh, this is an 1894, or it's a model 94 uh, Marlin in 44 Magnum. Okay, with a shorter barrel. You've seen that, I hope. 44 Magnum. And then we have a guide gun, 4570, model 1895 guide gun, 4570. You've seen that in action. I've had that a good while since about uh, 1999. And then we have the big 1886 remake by Browning, made in uh, 1986. Beautiful gun. You've seen it in several videos, chambered in 4570. It's one of my favorites. It's a beauty, right? And then this is the 1873 Winchester original that was given to us by a viewer hope you've seen the video on that had it out sunday morning a sunday morning uh, shoot around and uh you know this one is, is just a really nice old gun original and uh one of our reviewers the father died and they wanted us to have it and everything and and it does have some some sentimental value for that reason so i'm going to put it over on the side because i i don't want to really make a decision on that because it's a really special gun in so many ways so the sentimental value I'll put over there, okay? Now uh, this one is the 1892, the Model 92 4440 takedown model, okay? Beautiful old gun made in 1923. Hopefully you've seen videos on that, okay? Now some of you are probably thinking, wow, I don't know what he's talking about. I haven't seen that video. It wasn't recommended to me. Well, if you're waiting for them to be recommended to you, you might miss a you might miss a lot of real genius on our channel. So check that out, 1892, beautiful gun, original. And then another favorite, 
This is another model 94 Marlin, JM model, and 45 Colt. Used to compete cowboy action shooting with this. Bought it in about 1996, 97, and used it uh, in cowboy action shooting. And it, it's just buttery smooth. And then this is the 1895 STP, limited edition. I think there are only 500 of these made at uh, shorts. Uh, so many people have tried to buy that from me. It's, uh, it, uh, you know, they're, they're very, they've become very collectible. I didn't even know it when I bought it, uh, that it was limited. But, uh, you know, nice old 4570, very small, very short, great sights. So that's a pretty cool gun. Got a sling on that, you know, because I have to hit the hills, right? So that's the, the quick and dirty of the lineup. And so my challenge here, which I accept, and it is very difficult. It, it, these these uh, endeavors, you know, uh, have been hard. The 357 the Magnum video, uh, oh, wow. Uh, 1911, we, we want to do one with uh, single action revolvers. And they're almost undoable, okay? I mean, the mental exercise, the stress is more than I can stand. So, but I gotta decide, the down, I gotta get it down to one. Okay, uh, basically, now this again, this is of the guns on the table, you know, like with the shotgun video we did, because, well, no, if the uh, Model 870 hadn't been modified, you wouldn't have picked it. Well, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, I'm picking from my firearms as they are, okay? Maybe one of them has a, a I don't know, a trigger that doesn't work right. Well, that one's not gonna make it, no matter how much I like that model, or you might, okay? So of my firearms, uh, this is what I would choose. So if some, one of them has some modification that makes it more desirable, yeah. so be it. Yeah. That's why I would keep it, maybe. <laughs> okay, All right, let's, we'll start with the Henry. Uh, yeah, beautiful gun. It, it's a modern one. This is not an original, folks. You know, have your Rimfire 44 uh, Henry ammo. I don't know, hardly anybody does, but, uh, you know, made by Henry Rifle, uh, repeating arms, and uh, just a, a beautiful gun. It, historical, you know, the Henry is such an interesting firearm, the way it loads, and you know, we, we had that one loaded before we started, but you know how, how it works, you drop them, well, you drop them in, not too, too tight. And, uh, you know, this little tab moves on down as you use them up, you probably saw that, you've seen it in videos. I, I got a Put it as a finalist uh, now these firearms on the table are my finalists there's some that are not out here by the way like another pre-64 3030 winchester uh model 92 and they're the ones converted to 357 magnum it's an old one made in what 1917 that's a that's a favorite uh firearm too um what else there's a there's a cut oh, the iron framed henry like this one uh, there's another they'll come to, but yeah, there's four or five that didn't make the finals, although they could have. <laughs> they could have. <laughs> I make great choices when I buy a gun with my own money, okay? So I don't have any dogs or I wouldn't have them. But anyway, we got to go through and we got to decide. Uh, I'm going to, I'll just move four or five of them over here that I think are, I got to, you know, kind of the finals of the finals. And that's going to be in that group, I think, okay? Because that's just a great gun. And it's gonna, you know, it's never given us any trouble. Okay, let's move on to the 1886, uh, original 1886, 4570 Winchester. So cool. Hope you've seen the video. We maybe have just done one video with it, maybe two. Beautiful gun, even though it's worn. Uh, one of the primo Winchesters ever made, the 1886 model. She's the big, big cartridges generally. Uh, and this one, is a prize made in 1886. Uh, John was with me. We found this thing in Las Vegas at a gun show. Uh, not a casino. But you know, uh, if I only have one, I, it's probably not going to be one that uh, I might wear out. Because whatever the one is that I keep, if I have to narrow it down to one, it's going to be one that uh, I can just go out and shoot as much as I want, pretty much. You know, uh, uh, the cartridge that's available, not the 4570 is not. We're not considering the economics of it or the money or how expensive ammo is in this endeavor, uh, even though 4570 would be pretty expensive to shoot a lot, but I hand load it. And so we're not, that's not a concern as much as just the gun. So I'm gonna make some people mad. I'm gonna put this one down here. And uh, cause 
you know, I I love it, but uh, if I just had one, it would uh, probably be not that one. Okay. In here we have the next one to consider, the uh, 1895 JM model, 4570 again, cowboy model. Uh, you know, just really, really nice rifle. Uh, if I'm going to keep a 4570, it would definitely be a concern uh, or a consideration. And uh, th this is a nice rifle. I looked for one of these for a long time uh, before I found that in Tulsa uh, several years back. And be a good choice, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna eliminate it from the finals, okay? 4570 would be a good choice. What we're doing is let's just pick up this one. Here's another 4570. Like I said, this one is a, of a limited edition and uh, stainless, and it'd be a great all around firearm, wouldn't it? Yeah, hard to beat, it's a little short, <laughs> and I like it, but uh, it's not my favorite, believe it or not. As much as a lot of people just love these things and have tried to buy it from me, uh, it's not my favorite uh, lever gun, okay? I do like it, but it's not my favorite. So I'm going to put it over here as well. Okay. What are we sure we look at next? Uh, uh, da, da, da. That's this, this. Okay, this is a Model 94, JM model, uh, Marlin, and it's in 357 Magnum. Okay. 438 Special. And it's a newer newer JM model uh, but you know it's just like like brand new uh, you know it doesn't have that 100 year old vintage look or anything like that or age on it uh, character but uh, you know what these model 94 model 94 Marlins are so shootable that's why they were so popular in cowboy action shooting for a long time and still probably see uh, quite a few of them and this is a 357. Is there a more versatile cartridge than that in 38 Special? You know? So I'm gonna put that in the finalist pile over here. <laughs> pile, let's pile them up. All right, what do we got next? We've got the, see if I can get it right this time, 3030. Beautiful gun, 1929 Winchester Model 94. This is one of my favorites. It's got some character to it. I like it. You see these in a lot of the Westerns. These in the Model 92s. Uh, great shooter. Sights are right on. It's a real Winchester, right? Back when the Winchester was Winchester. But you know, 3030, if I'm just going to have one lever gun, uh, more of a hunting cartridge, not so much a plinking cartridge, you know, short range, you know, like shooting steel or whatever I want to do. I, so I probably wouldn't keep this, okay? It would work. It's a great gun. So we're going to move it over here. Where's the reject? I hate to call it a reject pile. They're, they're hardly rejects, right? Let's pick this one up. Here's another Model 94. Ooh, JM model in 45 Colt. One of my favorite cartridges and one of my favorite rifles. And this one is smooth. This one is smooth. Used it in cowboy action shooting, as I said. And this boy still has that on there. I'm gonna put this in the final stack, okay? All right. Wow, I got two Model 94s in the final stack. Uh, so here we are. Let's see, this was the uh, 4440 Model 92. Great gun, great piece of history. 1923, one of the most popular rifles, uh, lever guns ever made. Model 92, a takedown model. It is 4440, so uh, and it's an old gun. So, you know, I, it's my only lever gun. Uh, how many thousands of times do I want to shoot a gun made in 1923? piece of history and especially 4440 which is hard to come by kind of and, and expensive but also hard to come by okay so I'm gonna put it over here love it but not a not one I'd select Ooh, what's this beautiful gun yeah this is the 18 uh, uh, well it's a model 1886 you know but it's a remake that was made in 1986 that Browning brought back out and it's great just like the original I have and uh, Again, this one's not old, so it should hold up another 100 years, you know, with shooting, even though it's 4570, maybe not quite as versatile a cartridge for plinking and hunting or whatever. It's kind of a heavy gun, but it's just too beautiful. It's one of my favorites. It's buttery smooth. I gotta put it in the final stack, okay? 
Should I be stacking them or throw them in a pile, like I said? All right, now what we got? We got the, well, the guide gun, the old HP95 guide gun, 4570. This would be a great all-around gun, you know, in a lot of ways. Uh, but because it's a 4570, uh, you know, and if I'm going to choose a 4570, I, I, I'll go with the 1886, I think, if I'm going to do that. But you know, there's a good argument for this one. Many of you would choose that, I'll bet. Yep, and on a different day, maybe I would. Let's reject it. All right, now we've got another 1894 Marlin. This guy must like these uh, Marlin 1894 models. This one's in 44 Magnum, JM model, okay? Not as pretty, maybe, as the others, but it is a 44, and it's a Model 94 Marlin. And I've got the sights I like on them, spinner sights on these 94s, and a great shooter, the 44 Magnum. Nice all-around cartridge, right? You can get different loads, a lot of different loads for it. 44 Special, you can load your own. Fairly light loads, warmer loads, really hot loads. And a Marlin will handle that pretty well. So you can make an argument that that's a great all-around rifle, couldn't you? So we got to put it up here for consideration. All right, now I'm down to five. Okay, you're thinking you're going to be here all night. Eh, try not to be. But let's let's take a couple shots. Uh, we shot the the Henry. You know we know I just can't miss with it. And uh, this is let's, let's shoot a couple 357. I got the ammo kind of opened up here. This is the model 94. I need some reminding about some of these, whether I like them or not. Okay, and how much I like them. This is I haven't even had this one all that long, but I have always liked the 357 Magnum. Uh, you know, cartridge, 38 special, makes for a very, very versatile firearm. A lot of people, I mean, will tell you, even though it's not as big in diameter as a 44 or 45, you get the, the, uh, what? There's almost the same penetration or more. And uh, so, you know, in terms of hunting or whatever you want to do with it or plinking, uh, you're good to go. This one I noticed doesn't load as smoothly. Uh, as my well uh, as my 44 and my uh, 45 but a good shooter so let's uh, take a couple shots with it how about that jug oh yeah pretty warm <laughs> mr gong uh, mr ram oh boy how about that plate over there at red one yeah nice Mr. Cowboy, you need a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> yep, so that'd be pretty versatile. And uh, I'm not sure why exactly. It's a little more awkward to load. Uh, and that, that's a factor. You know, it's a, the specific firearm that, that makes a difference. Uh, I've kind of noticed that since I've had it. Maybe I need to do a little uh, dremeling on that. But that'd be a great all-around gun because uh, you know the cartridge and the firearm, the Model 94, and I could probably work out whatever that is about the, the loading issue. It seemed like after the first four or five, it, it, it gets stiff on me or something. And uh, let's get this 4570 over here, take a look at it. This thing is so smooth, we need a couple of rounds for it. Gotta shoot it. Well, I tell you, this one would really be hard to give up. How could I do it? <laughs> How could I do it? Look at that. Loads like butter. I mean, you don't pinch your finger. It just <laughs> feels so good. The heft of this thing, and because of that, you don't get much kick. Ooh. I mean, it kicked. Look at <laughs> good catch here. It does kick. Let's try the buffalo over there. It's hard to knock over usually. <laughs> Not with that round. How about uh, a two liter right here, this red one? Oh man, pulverize it. What if I hit that piece of cinder block over there on the barrel? Pulverize that too. Mr. Gong, you need a bullet. Yeah. And something close, like a pot needs a bullet. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm. I don't know if I can give that one up or not. Okay. So that brings up 44. Mag. Okay, this is a Marlin 94. You know, it's 
Uh, several of them made the finals, didn't they? There's some 44 Magnum ammo here. And uh, put a couple of rounds in. Double check the right stuff here. Yep, I'm gonna be moving too fast and put 45 Colt in or something. That's why I put the ammo in the box, indicating what it is. So the only thing I, I don't like as much about this one is, is uh, the finish work on it's not quite as good as the other 94s. It, uh, the forearm's a little loose unless I tighten it up. I'm not sure the fit and finish is quite as good. But it is a Model 94 octagonal barrel. Got my favorite sights on it. Yeah, let's go to the gong. <laughs> Wow, that's <laughs> in that plate all the way around. Oh, nice. So we're empty. Uh, that's a nice one. Uh, it, it, again, the shorter barrel, uh, if that were in a 24 inch barrel like my 45, it, and if it was a smooth, it might be the, yeah, the final. Okay, last one of these five, and I've got to make a decision. This one's always been like butter. I, I think it was like that when I bought it. Uh, and I know I've shot it a lot, and I shot a lot in matches, but you notice it loads just as smoothly, and, and well, no wonder I'm putting the wrong ammo in it, okay? So let's put the safety on, which I don't use very often on these. I'm, I'm afraid I haven't get to talking to you all, okay? It wouldn't be a, you know, it's not like it's going to blow up. It's a Marlin, but it's not a 44 mag, so let's put that over there, and let's slow down, get our 45 Colt ammo here. <laughs> Okay, I mean, I put the ammo on top of the box just so I wouldn't do that. All right, so that was intentional. It was just a teachable moment, right? Okay, so we're empty. So, like I said, it loads smoothly with the correct ammo or the incorrect ammo. Look at that. That's what, that's what I love in a lever gun. I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, no finger pinching, no bleeding. I recall doing a video out here, I think in the cold or something. I don't know whether it was a Rossi or what it was. And I was just bleeding from, from loading that thing. Okay, this one, this one is, is about as nice as that 1886. Okay, we got some targets down here. There's some pot right down there. Oh, I put the safety on, which I never use. Yeah, smoke a little pot. And let's do a little gonging. Just can't miss with it. And about that ram over there. Whoop. <laughs> How about this paper target? We gotta put one on that. Yeah, before we go away. Oh man, this thing just uh is so sweet. Click, I knew that. Yeah, you get the right ammo in it and it's just hard to beat. You can tell the, the wood is uh, aged a little bit and it's just so smooth. Uh, yeah, that's a beauty. All right, so we gotta make a decision. Okay, I'm gonna eliminate the 357, although again, if it was as smooth and, and worked as well as this one, that might be my finalist, okay? And if the 44 Magnum, had the 24 inch barrel like that one, uh, it might very well be my final. So the ones I have, okay? And if it was well made and it's tight, it's not bad, okay? So now, 4440, uh, I love this gun, but as far as, uh, you know, 4440, again, it's hard to find uh, hand loads uh, sometimes and very expensive and, and all that. So pretty gun. I really like it, but it wouldn't be my last lever gun. Plus, 44-40, it doesn't have quite the punch. Uh, you know, and it's a toggle link system. If you were going to hunt, if I were going to hunt with it, had to hunt with it or something, I wouldn't be able to load that thing up to really hot rounds, you know, if I needed to. Whereas these two, let's get it down to these two. Uh, 45 Colt in a, uh, uh, you know, rifle. It's not a 4570, but uh, I load some 300 grain bullets for this thing. And because it's a Marlin, it can be kind of a poor man's 4570, not quite as powerful, 
but uh, you can you can crank them on up if they're going to be in this not a cold signal action or anything like that but uh, this will handle some really warm 45 colt and they're 45 you know they're full 45 diameter they're big bullets right so that'd be a good option and of course 4570 you can't beat that uh, you might <clears throat> I might be more successful I'm thinking through this I can I can shoot some light loads in this 45 right really cowboy loads even lighter it doesn't matter no springs to worry about as long as they get out the barrel I can shoot as light a load as I want I can also shoot some really really warm loads they're essentially not that different from you know regular 4570 okay so a lot of versatility with this especially if you hand load or you, I mean they're available you can buy them already loaded from various cartridge companies you know that, that designate for the Marlin or, or others uh, so that's pretty attractive this one's attractive because it's beautiful and it feels so good they're both the most as I well probably uh, maybe a couple of those others are kind of buttery but as far as the action loading uh, smooth pinch free uh, they both excel in that area I guess as much as I hate to give up my 1886, uh, the big cartridge, uh, for all around, I think it's going to be this one. Uh, this is uh, the right size. It's a very handy rifle. It's got the octagonal, octagonal barrel I like and, uh, and the length I like. Uh, my pad gives me the length of the butt I want. I got my sights on it. And it, it never fails me if I put the right ammo in it. Uh, <laughs> 45 Colt and uh, I'm going to shoot it again because guess what it's the winner it is the winner today and uh, I miss shooting it I don't shoot it enough and I'm going to find some things to plink with it because it has won for the day and if I came out tomorrow I might be even more sober make another decision you never know <laughs> another choice so you get to shoot the close UT, two liter, <laughs> and everything else up here. What <laughs> missed? <laughs> Let's go over there and shoot something over there. And how about a turkey to top it off? Boom! <laughs> and a ram or a pig up there in that top row. Quick. How about no? Let's do Let's get one more bullet. I just had a need to hit him. Oh, come on. I guess I have to admit defeat and put two in. How's that? I don't know where I'm going. Okay, I'm just going to go a little bit low. So, anyway. You know, I, I got to choose this baby for my one lever gun today. All right. Uh, I could have chosen five, six, seven, any of those others. would be great, great. But uh, this gun, great plinker. Again, we're not considering cost of 45 Colt. I hand load it. I mean, just, you know, for today's sake, uh, not considering the cost of the ammo. So great plinker shoot light loads, shoot hot loads. I didn't bring any out, but uh, 300 grain bullets, got a lot of them I've loaded in, and uh, they got, they, they, you can feel the recoil. Uh, gun handles them just fine, and they would handle about anything you know, just fine. And uh, it's just a smooth gun, it's a Marlin JM. Uh, so for one lever gun, uh, yeah, I guess it'd be my choice. And I'm a lucky guy as I, uh, fully am aware of that I have some really really nice lever guns that I hope you have one I hope you have one and uh, if you don't you should be working on that problem okay because it's a real deficiency uh, in your character or something I don't know what the deal is but <laughs> I don't know why you don't have one no it should be on your list your bucket list okay so uh, I'm not selling Marlin or promoting Marlin over any other brand or anything like that. This this just of the guns I have, if I had to choose and give them all up and have one lever gun, I guess I'd just go with this baby right here. All right. So glad you came out 
and help me go through this mental anguish today. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms, you can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in, improve the grip for your handguns um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at TalonGunGrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastall. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastall for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant, and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great, and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to Ballastall.com, TalonGunGrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.